through the five rounds before it was stopped. If you took part in the uh, voting, we thank you for your participation. The online voting will continue with the start of our next bout. Felix Trinidad versus uh, Troy Waters. And right now we're set to go back uh, inside the ropes with some analysis of that fight from uh, from Bobby Chen. Bobby? Sanchez does, excuse me, does some things on the inside trying to work hard, but look at, look at, I mean, just look at the way Lopez finishes. He throws punches, they're hard, they're deceivingly hard. He's a thin, frail guy, only weighs 105 pounds, but he's ripping shots up on the inside, left and right. He works, works the uppercuts. We got a quick view there, the tail end. All right, Bobby, uh, as we go outside, inside the ropes, uh, once again, coming up next, our main event, the WBC Super Welterweight Elimination Bout. A crowd of better than 14,000 on hand here, we are just told at Madison Square Garden, the mecca of boxing. Undefeated IBF welterweight champion Felix Trinidad goes against number one WBC super welterweight contender Troy Waters, the winner to become the mandatory challenger for Terry Norris's WBC super welterweight bout. Let's get it back to uh, Jim uh, Gray right now, who's standing by with a special guest. Jim. All right, thank you very much, Steve. I'm now here with the Vice President of Sports for Madison. Explosive punching power, but in four of those 11 defenses, he was knocked down, raising legitimate questions about his chin. What Troy Waters may lack in technique, he makes up for in heart, toughness, and sporadic power. Ask Terry Norris, who got decked by Waters back in 1993. These are uncharted waters for Trinidad, who has never fought at 154. Will it make a difference? Well, Trinidad gives us his take on that. As of today, I could still be at the welterweight level, but we decided to move up in weight. While some believe he was having trouble making the 147 pound limit, Trinidad claims there was another reason to leave the welterweight division. I'm gaining weight because at 147 pounds, those fighters that are supposed to be the best in the world don't want to fight me. Despite the added weight, the hard-hitting Trinidad is confident his greatest strength will not be diminished. I feel much stronger now. I know that I will be able to maintain my punch. I also believe that you're born with your punch. But uh, over time, you can develop it even more. What I really want is to win the title and then uh, go ahead and plan my future because I want to be the best one pound for pound in the world. I'm the best already, but I want the whole world to be convinced of it. So will Trinidad step up in weight to have any bearing on his performance tonight? And what about his history of getting knocked down? Trinidad has told us on several occasions that his excellent conditioning gives him his quick recuperative powers. After all, he has come back to knock out all four opponents who put him on the canvas. He, he downplays the notion of a suspect chin by saying all great champions have been knocked down. Well, let me pose this question to the fight, Dr. Uh, Ferdy, what about his step up in weight? Will that have any effect on uh, Trinidad in terms of punching power? I don't think so at all in terms of punching power. If anything, he'll punch a little bit heavier. What I what I want to see tonight is does it affect his speed, his reflexes, because that's what's got him here. He's so fast. His reflexes are so good on defense. He's picture perfect on his punches. If his reflexes are awful because he's heavier, that may affect his performance. Not punching power. I believe, if anything, he's going to punch harder as he goes up to in that weight. Uh, he is a perfect uh, aimer of punches, if you want to call it that. Pretty accurate. He's yeah. accurate. He's accurate. He's right on the money. So with those punches and that weight, he should be devastating. How about his uh, mental focus going into this fight? He's had a lot of letdowns, uh, you know, well, losing I, out on those fights. I don't think those are letdowns. Those is like, uh, you know, you're, you're going to take an exam in a real hard course and say, no, you're not going to have algebra today. You're going to have English. And then they say, you're not going to have English. You're going to have physical ed. I mean, you know, it, the easier it gets, the more the fighter says, oh, um, that's good. I'll go and get my money and not have to work too hard. I, uh, this guy is 
is focused on being the best fighter in the world. And when he says the best, he means he wants to take on De La Hoya, everybody. I think so the next year or two should be very interesting with these young up-and-coming guys. Really good. This question, really good. academic, I think, but uh, how about a prediction? I, I, I just don't see how Troy, I think Troy Waters is in deep waters. I oh, mean, ooh. Ooh, that's, very nice. that's as good as I can say. Okay. Uh, we have seen uh, Mr. Waters a couple of times. He is a fierce uh, competitor. Of course, he put uh, Norris down back in 19... 93. Will he pose the same problems for Trinidad that he did for Norris? Well, if you consider Trinidad and Norris's chins to be the same, he would pose the same problem because he has some power. And after all, Trinidad is coming up to 54. Kind of new waters for him against Troy Waters. But here's the thing. Trinidad, when he goes down, Steve, and he gets up, he seems to be recuperated by the time he gets up. Not as debilitated as Norris appears. I think that's going to be key factor number one. Number two, Trinidad has taller, he's taller, has better range, better leverage. I think all the way around, this is going to be less of a problem than it was for Norris in Troy Water. All right, well, Trinidad is uh, methodical. He is destructive. Let's go inside the ropes with Bobby Chez right now and I get a further review of the style of uh, Tito Trinidad. One of the sharpest punches to come along boxing today. Here we're going to see him throw a double left hook to the head. Not d done an awful lot. Short, sharp left hook. Almost no motion wasted, both crisp, both clean, both on the money. He does that on a regular basis. Here's how dangerous he is. Even going backwards, you'll see him tee off on Yuri Boy Compass with a right hand and a left hook, which started the beginning of the end for Compass, that left hook ripping his head up in the air. He is dangerous at every angle, Steve, and that is really key for him. As we close out uh, this installment of Inside the Ropes, we look at uh, the WBC number one rated super welterweight contender, Troy Waters, engaging uh, personality. Very down to earth and coming into hostile territory as he's fighting a popular man from uh, Puerto Rico, born in London, moved to Sydney, Australia, came to the States to fight for a while, but now he's back in Sydney. Recently came to the States to fight in Kansas City against Joaquin Velasquez, but that fell through. He took this fight on short notice, and here he comes. Hey, here we go. Let's rock the garden, Troy. Rock the garden. comes Troy Waters, the first Australian to fight at Madison Square Garden, former British uh, Commonwealth and Australian Super Weatherweight champion. Finally gets his music going there. It took a while, but I don't think it's the right music, folks. I'll tell you what, that's about one of the best looking <laughs> fighters. He looks a little bit like Christian Slater, who's doing his own fighting this weekend. Yeah, he has those uh, movie star looks, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a good looking kid. You know, we got the uh, Ferdy's prediction. How about you just for the record, Bobby? Well, Steve, I, I clearly think that Trinidad is the goods and that he will prevail by knockout. But what I'd like to see is if Troy Waters is tough enough and durable enough, as we saw evidence of against Norris, he'd have lasted with the cuts with Norris. Might have been an interesting fight past rounds five and six. That's what I'm looking to see if he can get past rounds five and six. And with his extra weight, first time for Trinidad up here, push Trinidad and see what happens. Well, he takes a lot of punishment. We've seen that. But he can punch, as evidenced by his effective uh, right cross, which uh, put Terry Norris on the canvas. But he does absorb a lot of punishment, but he won't back down. Has the reputation of beating everybody but the top names. Has his time come to finally pull off a surprise? We'll soon find out. Here's the man he's got to uh, surprise. Felix Trinidad, who will reportedly receive $1.2 million for this fight. Not bad for a non-title fight. He'll have the, uh, the crowd behind him when he enters the dynamic Felix Trinidad, the IBF welterweight champ, making his debut at 154. His dad's right in front. His dad worked in the corner of the last losing fighter, and now he comes out for a winning fighter. So let's see. I 
Alberto, a mi hija de Sin Nicol. La quiero mucho. ¡Puerto Rico! Well, despite his unblemished uh, record, high knockout ratio and explosive uh, power, he does have that uh, that suspect chin. Although uh, I kind of uh, I kind of like the way you put it, Bobby. You don't call it a suspect chin or a questionable chin. You just say the guy doesn't have a, a great chin. Well, you know what? That's what I believe, Steve. I believe his chin isn't really suspect because he doesn't, he doesn't really get demoralized with one single shot. He just doesn't have a great chin. That's not to say it's not even that good, but it's not great. And there is a difference. He has a history of being rocked early. All four knockdowns uh, against him coming in the second round. But uh, he is an outstanding boxer, powerful puncher, excellent jab, all around smooth and vicious. He plays to the crowd of 14,162 here at Madison Square Garden tonight. The flag of uh, Mexico, of uh, Puerto Rico, Felix out of Cupi Alto, Puerto Rico. As we check the tail of the tape, uh, and outside of the age where Trinidad is eight years younger, Trinidad and Waters are mirror images, same height, same reach, and the weight nearly identical. And the WBC rules in accordance with New York for this championship fight, scoring by the 10-point must. There's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. The ref or doctor can stop the fight. The fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round, as you can see. There's the accidental foul rule. If it occurs before the, uh, the end of round four, it's a technical draw after they go to the cards. So right here at Madison Square Garden, we're getting ready for the WBC Super Welterweight Elimination Bow. Felix Trinidad versus Troy Waters. The crowd is up. We get the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, before we present our featured attraction at this time, we ask for your attention for a solemn moment as we pause to recognize the passing of someone who is dear to the world of boxing. Al Braverman recently died. He was a fighter, a promoter, and a matchmaker, and a colorful fixture to the sport of boxing for many decades. As someone especially dear to the Don King Productions family, he will be sorely missed. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for boxing's tribute of a 10 count as our timekeeper tolls 10 in honor of Big Al Braverman. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. May God rest his soul. Please remain standing as we now present the singing of the national anthem of the United States. Thank you very much to India. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Mecca of Boxing, Madison Square Garden in New York City for our main event of the evening brought to you by Don King Productions and King Vision in association with Showtime Event Television, Madison Square Garden, and the St. Ives family of brands. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Edward Tangaraja, along with the New York State Athletic Commission, the Chairman is Floyd Patterson, Executive Director Tony Russo, Commissioners Rose Tretman and Melvin Southard, Director of Boxing is Bob Duffy. Our physicians at ringside, we have doctors Rufus Sadler, Gerald Velotta, Robin Scarlotta, and Michael Strauss. Our timekeeper at the bell is Jim Borzell. Introducing to you our judges scoring this bout from ringside, 
Don Ackerman, Joe Dwyer, and Robert Gilson. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance, and boxing fans joining us around the world, it's showtime! With the WBC Super Welterweight Championship Elimination Bout, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing, introducing to you our referee in charge of this bout, Arthur Mercanti Sr. Introducing to you first on my right, ladies and gentlemen, he is fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks and hailing from Sydney, Australia. He weighed in at 153 and one half pounds, his record stands at 27 wins, four losses, with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. He is currently ranked the WBC number one super welterweight contender, introducing the glamour with the hammer, Troy Waters. opponent across the ring on my left ready to fight out of the red corner wearing white trunks with multi-color trim hailing from and representing Coupe Alto Puerto Rico he weighed in at already 153 pounds as one of the young stars of boxing today, he is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with 31 wins, no losses, 27 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the undefeated IBF welterweight champion of the world, introducing Felix Tito Trinidad. Arthur Marchetti Sr. now to give instructions. Let me take just a little of that Vaseline that's hanging off there, look. <clears throat> Very little. That's all right, that's great. <clears throat> uh, good evening, gentlemen. You both received your instructions earlier in the evening. So shake hands now and come boxing at the bell. Good luck. Huh? Felix Trinidad, one of the highest knockout ratios in boxing today, 87%. 17 of his last 18 opponents did not last the distance. Only Hector Camacho took him to the final bell in the last five plus years. Averages about four rounds per bout with seven first round knockouts. And here is Troy Waters involved in one of the more stirring rounds of 93 against Terry Norris. Round number two, he was hammered in the first and then knocked Norris down with a right cross. Norris legitimately rocked, and it turned out to be a war the rest of the way. He's got a solid chin, but his face took a beating in that fight, 32 stitches over and under the eyes. Let's see what happens here tonight against Trinidad. He felt very clear, very clear in his head that if he could have survived the cuts and got into the seventh or eighth round, that he could have stopped Norris, because Norris used so much energy to get him out in the first couple of rounds. He told us that he feels Trinidad is not as physically strong as Norris. But what Trinidad looks can be deceiving. He hit Trinidad with a good hook, and Trinidad countered right back with a hook. Trinidad doubling up on the uh, left hooks, but those were uh, defended well by Waters. Waters says as soon as Trinidad hurts someone, they say, I've had enough. He's not like that. He says he's not in awe of Felix. He respects him. But he added, he's coming up to my way. His plan is to catch him while he is punching. Very few people have been able to back Trinidad up too often. And right now, Waters is doing a good job. Yuri Boy Compass did, but caught a tremendous beating on the way in. Waters said defense will be a key for him tonight. I've never seen Trinidad start really fast. He kind of boxes around for one round. If he gets knocked down in a second, then he gets it in gear. Otherwise, he takes his time. He's kind of methodical about things. Trinidad is a notoriously slow starter, as you know, but not a bad finisher. I wouldn't say not a bad finisher. I'd say an excellent finisher. Yeah, and he's so different from Terry Norris. I'd love to see, uh, you know, if he gets by Waters here. Norris in Trinidad. Norris, type of guy that just jumps right on you. That was one of the modern-day dream matches. It really was. Yeah. 
But Waters does have a good chin. He joked one reason why. He got a steel plate in his jaw. He had his jaw broken three times. Once in a car crash, two in fights. But the Waters does look more physically imposing, but the, I don't know what that means against a guy like Felix Trinidad. It means you take jabs an awful lot and better. I mean, it's like hitting the side of a building. It just keeps popping. There's a nice... Oh, wow. Down goes Waters. The left hook on the temple hurt him, Steve. Five, the right hand was just ten, like a... Here, take that seven, with you. Eight, nine. Just, oh, he just made it. Yeah, the right was window dressing. Let's see if he can finish him off in the first round. Trinidad pouring it on. A flash knockdown from a right. Well, I'll tell you what. He goes down again with 20 seconds to go. Five, six, seven, Trinidad jumping eight, up on the turnbuckle. Nine, ten. He's out. It's over. It's over with 10 seconds to go in round one. Felix Trinidad has won the bout. Doesn't get too much better than that, does it, Steve? Well, Waters had a rough little fight. <laughs> he didn't have a chance. At just about the stroke of midnight, the witching hour took place, and there it goes. Well, well, I obviously, like everybody, thought Trinidad was going to win. I didn't uh, think it was going to be this fast, though. Or we'd have more of a contest from Waters. Waters would fight back more and try to at least, you know, connect with some good punches. He got he got hurt before he even got started. Not a very satisfying fight, but then again, this is the third man that he was scheduled to fight, so that's the way it goes. You know, Steve, one good way to not worry about the second round knockdowns and knock him right out in the first. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, so much for the second round knockdown worries of Felix Tito Trinidad. All four of his uh, knockdowns coming in the second round, but he disposes of uh, Australia's Troy Waters in the first round. Hardly, hardly worth the trip all the way from Australia, was it? All right, let's right. take a look at that. And we'll, we'll see the, the, the delayed reaction of that. You see, that was, it was a delayed reaction. It was a left hook to the oh. temple. It was a delayed reaction. Was just like we saw the other one. It was over the ear. There's and no telling what can happen when you get hit in the temple. Watch it again. Watch that left hook right on the temple. There it is. And you can see the delayed reaction. His feet are not really under him. The right hand doesn't even really hit his head. It's him in the shoulder. No, he yeah. was on his way to the canvas. Yeah, the right hand had nothing to do with it. I mean, he almost dove for the canvas. But it's just that, uh, all right, let's take a look at the second one because uh, it's uh, this one is a continuous it's just pummeling. Uh, Tito just decided over and under and up and over. And not many of those punches are going through cleanly, but you know what? He's punching so hard, he's punching through the gloves. And a couple of shots that hit the head right there. The head. And, and just as many fighters have had problems with those head shots, as does Troy Waters. And, and we also saw it go right through the gloves, Bobby. And, you know, I've always said, if you're punching very hard and your gloves up, you're feeling it through the glove. I mean, the heavy punchers like Foreman, List, and those guys. Well, watch here. See that left hook to the head in that yeah, one? Yeah. Those yeah. who really finished him. Those two, those who really got him right in that right third there. one, that's the third one. Right those shots here. to the temple, the same thing that got him down to start. And so much uh, for stepping up in weight being a problem for Felix uh, Trinidad. There he is, uh, scoring knockdowns at 208 and uh, the final one at 236. TKO officially at 250, 250 of round one. Felix talking to the, uh, the folks back home in Puerto Rico. And Felix Trinidad is successful in his first fight at 154 over number one contender Troy Waters and now replaces Waters as the number one WBC super welterweight contender in line for the title of Terry Norris. Let's go over to uh, Jimmy Lennon Jr. right now with the official time. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 50 seconds of round number one. A referee in charge, Arthur Mercanti, reaches the count of 10. He's the winner by way of knockout. He is still undefeated. Felix Tito So Trinidad now 32 and 0 with 28 knockouts. All kinds of future possibilities for the Puerto Rican. Given his size and potential, he may uh, he may not stop at super welterweight. He could go higher than that, but uh, he could go back down and, and, and fight Ike Corte, Oscar De La Hoya. As you look at uh, Troy Waters in defeat here tonight, he wants uh, uh, Felix once told us uh, though that his dream fight is with Pernell Whitaker, but that uh, switches now to Terry Norris. 
Meanwhile, Troy Waters slips to 27 and 5. Once again, uh, unable to beat a top name. And it remains to be seen what happens from the, uh, the point, this point on with Terry Norris. He could defend his title or move down to fight Forte or De La Hoya or give, uh, give his belt uh, away, creating a vacancy. All right, let's go up to Jim Gray for post fight reaction. Jim. All right, thank you very much, Steve. Congratulations to you once again, Abel. It's going to be our translator working overtime tonight, Abel. First of all, tell me, did you feel as though this would be as easy as it was? Bueno, yo, yo sabía, yo, yo vine a ganar. Yo no, yo no vine a perder. Yo quería ganar por nocao. I came to win, but I came to win with a knockout. Felix, what do you do now? You, you are forcing a mandatory fight of Norris. However, you know, these could be two ships sailing past each other in the night because he could opt out and give up his title. Do you feel as though he will come and fight you now? ¿Qué es lo que piensa usted? ¿Va ahorita en una ruta para pelear con, un, con uh, eliminación con Terry Norris? ¿Ya hizo esto? ¿El campeonato sigue? Terry no quiere pelear con usted. ¿Qué piensa de eso? Bueno, yo sé que mi, promo, mi promotor, Don King, nombre one en el mundo, él va a buscar, a, a buscar esa pelea con Terry Norris y vamos a ser nuevo campeón de las 154 libras. My promoter, Don King, who's number one in the world, is going to look for that fight against Terry Norris. And we're going to be champion in 154 and be number one in the world. Do you feel as though he's ducking you, Norris? ¿Usted piensa que les está zafando él? Sí, no, dice, no, no, no estoy yendo, pero como dije, Don King lo va a hacer que pelee conmigo porque yo soy el número uno del mundo. Yeah, he's running for me, but Don King is going to force him to fight against me, and we're going to be number one. Well, no one can force him. However, let's take a look at your first knockdown and then your second knockdown. Felix, tell us what was going on with this. Platícale cómo te pasó con el knockdown. Bueno, el primer golpe que yo le di fue un gancho izquierda. No, este, yo pego bien fuerte con esa mano. The first good punch that I hit him with was a left hand, and I felt that I hurt him because I hit real hard with that hand. And then the second knockdown? Y la segunda vez que lo tumbó. La segunda vez que lo tumbé, pues, él se arrinconó en una esquina y yo le, le di mucho golpe, mucho golpe. Y yo creo que eso, eso fue lo determinante para, para acabar la, la pelea. I cornered him, and I threw a lot of unanswered punches, punches, and I think that's what uh, really finished off the fight. As we see it wind up here. Let me ask you, Felix, how disappointing have these past several months been you were set to fight Norris. It didn't come off because of the Tyson fight. Then the delay. Now he has opted out. How disappointing has this been for you? And how difficult has it been for you because you've wanted to fight him very badly? Muy difícil que le cambiaron los rivales y Norris se les sacó, se les fue Woodward y esperó dos meses sin hacer nada. ¿Se aburrió usted? Bueno, no. Yo yo seguí entrenando porque eso yo se lo dejo a mi padre. Y yo seguí entrenando porque yo sabía que yo iba a pelear hoy día 23. No, I just kept training. I followed the lead, my father's lead, and I kept training because I knew I was going to fight the 23rd. You seem to be more excited tonight. You jumped up on the ropes. Was that because you had so many fans here rooting you on? Estaba bien contento, brincó arriba de las cuerdas, como que porque tenía mucha gente aquí que lo estaba apoyando. Sí, sí, y me siento como si estuviera en mi casa en Puerto Rico. Aquí hay muchos boricos, hay muchos latinos que me vieron a apoyar. All right, congratulations, Don. Your thoughts and comments, what about Terry Norris? I think that Terry Norris is afraid. I think he showed his cowardice when he went out. He let Bob Arum blow smoke in his brain. When he, this is the night he should have been there to catapult himself into prominence. He and his manager, Joe Sajadovich, and Tito Trinidad and his father and their lawyer made the deal for the contract for Terry Norris and Trinidad. They bought it to me to promote it. I agreed to promote it and, and went out there to do it. Terry Norris took the money on the first fight, which was 850000 He took the Mercedes Benz, $100,000 Mercedes Benz, and then he let Aram tell him that something is wrong because the fight was postponed, and he ran off, and I think he showed a yellow cowardice. I love Terry Norris, but I think he's, he did a very stupid thing uh, when he did this here to this fight because he, he should be in the ring tonight. Quickly, though, Don, and we'll come back to this. What are you going to do to resurrect it? What are you going to do to bring these two parties together? Well, first of all, I'm going to win in court. That's one thing. Because he said the contract ain't no good, he made it. If it ain't no good, he made it, not me. And then secondly, I got contracts on Terry Norris that's promotional as well as bout agreements. And so while he's going through this here, and he's not the mandatory challenger, he can't get away, as Joe Lewis would say, he can run, but he can't hide. The only thing Terry Norris can do is to give up his title because his stock has went down precipitously. He is zero. And see, now he's fighting on ESPN for $100,000 or $50,000, whatever Aram can count him into doing. And it's the most stupidest thing he's ever done in his life. More with Don in just a moment. Troy Waters is right here. He is fine as he gets his congratulations from Tito. Congratulations to you, Tito. Let's send it back now to Steve. All right, Jim. Uh, get the uh, feeling that uh, Don is just warming up. 
Coming up next here at Madison Square Garden in New York, the WBA Featherweight Championship. Wilfredo Vasquez will take on Roque Cassiani. That our fifth and final fight. Big crowd of 14,162. And uh, our live edition of the fights ending with a bang, literally, with Felix Trinidad uh, putting Troy Waters on the uh, canvas two times. The, the second one ended it, and I thought that Arthur McCanty uh, gave Troy Waters every opportunity. He counted him right up to the end. Right now, let's go back to Jim Gray.